Today we're going to take a look at how we can safely hook up our house to our generator to power our entire home during a power outage. And we're going to take a look at how to properly backfeed and six mistakes that I made the first time that I tried to do this. Some people are going to say, whoa, 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 never backfeed because it can be very dangerous. You're absolutely right. Here's the deal though. There's people out there who are going to do this, whether I talk about it or not. So if I can help you learn from my mistakes and if I can show you the proper way to do it, hopefully we can keep you safe and more importantly, the people out there working on the power line safe as well. The two big concerns when you're doing this, we need a couple of caveats here first. First off, only do what you're comfortable doing. Number two, if you do this wrong, you can electrocute yourself or worse than this, you can backfeed into the power grid and hurt a linesman. Remember these two things. If you do everything safely, you're going to have no problems. Number one, the one thing you have to do before everything else, even though your power is off, you have to flick the main breaker of your panel. If you don't do that, then the power can feed out, get bumped up through transformers, and then give a linesman a really bad day out there. Well, we need a cord, a properly constructed cord of the right gauge to feed from your generator into your outlet or inlet on the outside of your house to then feed to the proper size breaker on the panel, which will then feed power to your entire panel for your home if the power's out with your main breaker off. We also need something called an interlock switch or some way to make sure somebody else can't come along and turn on the main breaker to the home. Don't try to build all this or set all of this up during a power outage. If you're in the middle of a power outage right now, just take plugs, extension cords, run them in through your doggy door, run them through in through a window, put a towel in the window and power what you need. Get by for now because if you try to do this stuff when you're stressed, when the wind's blowing, when the power's out, when everybody's cranky and hungry and cold, you're going to make a mistake and that's when somebody's going to get hurt. So do this long before. Do this on a sunny Sunday afternoon in June with a beer in your hand and the knowledge that, hey, I have the freedom to experiment and learn what I'm doing right now. It's going to be a complete list of the items that I used in the description below. So what were the mistakes that I made last year and how did I improve my backfeeding system? Mistake number one, and this was probably the most dangerous one that I made, was I made a plug with two male ends. I didn't realize there was a safer option. I knew what I was doing, but still, why is that dangerous, you might say? Because you plug one end into the generator, all of a sudden you have the other end of a hot cord sticking out that you need to plug into your inlet or outlet on the outside of your home. Now, it's fine if you wait and turn your generator on after you plug everything up, but it was one more thing that could go wrong if you weren't careful. So what did I do? I replaced that male end with a twist lock female end. That takes me to mistake number two. Mistake number two, I did not put a locking plug on the outside. So before, if somebody tripped on it, it would be really hard to do. But as a prepper, somebody into preparedness, we need to have redundancy. So if somebody came along and tried to pull that out or stepped on the cord, they might be able to pull it out before. Now it goes in, it twists locked into place, you can pull on it, it will not remove. Another layer of safety. I had a female outlet, just a typical 50 amp box on the outside of the house to plug that male plug into. That had to be replaced. I had to actually change that to a special generator inlet. The cover flips up. It has male prongs in there that the female twist locks hooks into. But it never matters because that breaker stays off inside the house all the time except when I have the back feed hooked up. Mistake number four. The exterior outlet that I installed wasn't really waterproof. It was made to be outdoors, but water was still getting into it. It was a metal design. The new one I replaced is a locking 100% waterproof inlet box. Much safer and honestly, just longer lasting. That's what's more important to me. When I installed my 50 amp breaker, I just picked the next open slot in the panel. Guess what? It was all the way at the bottom. I can't install an interlock switch. The interlock switch has to be at the very top of the panel in order that when I turn off the main, I can slide the interlock up and then engage the 50 amp back feeding breaker. I didn't know how or when the power was back on. The first time we had power outage, I left my backup generator running two or three hours longer than I needed to because I had no way to figure out if the power had been turned back on. I've since picked up a power return alarm, which is going to get hooked up to the panel as well, but it was just something simple. And finally, I had a lock that would technically lock out 
the main breaker if I used it right, but you could still pull it off really hard if you tried. So I made my own interlock switch and basically flick the main breaker off, interlock switch pops up, then the 50 amp can come over and engage the back feeding system. There's nothing magical about an interlock switch. All it does is make sure you don't turn on the main breaker. First thing you need to know is what is the amperage and voltage of the main outlet on your generator. Mine is the Furman Tri-Fuel Generator. It has a 220 volt, 50 amp outlet on the machine. So you need to have a cord that will run 50 amps properly and safely from your generator to the house. I wanted 25 feet, so it got it far enough away that there's no issue with fire or carbon monoxide. So I got a 6.3 wire from Amazon with the, the plug-in 50 amp end for the generator and bare wires on the other end. Then I bought a 50 amp, it's very important to make sure it's 50 amp, 50 amp twist lock female end for the other end. Installed that, I bought an inlet box, which is a 50 amp male twist lock for the house. I went and bought a double 50, a two pole 50 amp breaker for my breaker panel. If you're not comfortable putting breakers in, again, hire someone to do it. I ran the 6.3 outdoor rated wire from the panel out through my foundation, under my deck, and to the box. Now I have a perfectly safe per generator hookup. Back feeding is one of those things that people are like, don't do it, or they do it and don't want to talk about it. But the thing is, people are going to do this. So I hope this video helps you do it safely. But if you have constructive criticism on something that could be improved from the system, leave them down there because... Half of what's in this video came from exactly community members like you who said, hey, Tim, you should do it this way. It's safer. It's better. It's a more robust system. So with that, guys, I hope it helps. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.